We're going to talk about the springs in a cylinder head and the, the purpose and then some of the inspections that you should make um, once you have uh, disassembled your cylinder head um, to ensure that your, your springs are doing, doing their job. So here I have a cutaway of the cylinder head. Um, this is just one cylinder. We're looking at an intake and exhaust valve right here. This is the springs that we're talking about. The main purpose of these springs is to return the valve to a closed position. As we can see here, this, these valves are in the closed position. Once the camshaft is no longer pressing down by either a rocker arm or directly onto the valve itself. So I want to be able to close this. If this valve is not properly closed, combustion gases can leak past it and uh, eventually the, the, it will ruin the valve. Not to mention any misfires that occur as a direct result of this valve not seating appropriately. So we want to do an inspection on the springs. We want to make sure that they are returning appropriately. Now each of these springs has a, a certain amount of tension that's built inside of it uh, in the metal to be able to return it to the closed position. Alright, so I have a couple of springs right here. These are taken out of a cylinder head and the purpose of these springs uh, um, is the same. Now the, the springs are going to be a lot, uh, there's a lot of different variations. There's some that aren't square shouldered like this, they have a taper to them and they're meant to provide a different amount of force during different uh, positions of the um, application of the valves. We may also have a condition where we have a spring on the interior and one on the exterior to be able to return the um, valve to the closed position at an appropriate level. The springs are actually retained in position. I've got this spring retainer here on the top. It just sits inside of the, the, the spring itself. And there's a little keeper. So this is the, the keeper that sits inside. Um, there's two of these. There's two halves. And they, uh, the, the little groove that's inside of this keeper is retained against the valve itself. They are tapered, so they sit down inside. They sit down inside both halves inside of this plate, and then hold the spring in position. Okay, so uh, the first measurement or the first inspection that we're going to be concerned with is a visual inspection. We're just going to look over the springs, and we're going to ensure that there's no discoloration, uh, that there's nothing broken, there should be no cracks due to heat. Um, especially on the exhaust side, we're going to get some serious heat coming back through there. We want to make sure that there's no discoloration or anything <clears throat> like that during our visual inspection. The second thing that we're concerned about, or the second measurement that we're concerned about, is known as the free height measurement. The free height measurement is not with the spring installed into the, in the cylinder head. It's actually the spring without it installed that's just standing here, nothing, no pressure is being placed upon it, and we're going to be measuring that height. Now we can do that with a couple different ways. Right here I have a square and I would, I would set this square up to measure the appropriate uh, length and compare that length to um, service information. I might also use a uh, uh, veneer caliper to be able to determine the, um, the height and I could measure that by placing the caliper similar to this. and measure the free height according to that. So each inch engine manufacturer is going to specify a height and we just need to make that measurement um, and determine whether or not it's within the specifications. All right, the next uh, inspection or, or uh, measurement that we're gonna be providing uh, to ensure that the spring is, is good to go is a um, squareness check. So I've got this square here and I'm looking for any gaps in the spring as it's uh, as we go up the spring. So we don't have any spacing in between here. This is a nice and square spring. If it were not square, we would have a problem with returning the valve uh, appropriately to its closed position. All right, we can also do a comparison here to determine whether or not the, the springs match each other in height. So I would take my shortest or my two tallest springs and put them on the outside and then any of the smaller springs and put them on the inside and I make sure that I don't have any significant gaps. Any spring that was well below the, the um, height that would definitely need to be um, replaced. So those are some of the measurements that I would, that I would take um, or inspections that I would make on the spring uh, to ensure that it will close appropriately.
This tool right here is going to measure uh, the amount of pressure that the spring can um, push against to close the valve appropriately. So the spring may pass the free height measurement um, and fail this measurement. So we want to ensure that uh, when the spring is in the um, open and closed position, it's applying the appropriate amount of force uh, against the, the valve itself. So I have the gauge over here. This gauge is to measure the height of the spring. And you'll look in the service information for your specific uh, vehicle. Um, and the engine should specify the closed height and the open height and the quantity or the amount of pressure that should be um, exerted against the spring. So the first thing that I would do in this particular spring, I'm going to come down to the um, closed height. Remember the closed height means that the spring is in its farthest most travel upward and it is um, closing the valve. So I would come down to the appropriate height and, and we're just we're not using real numbers here but just to get the facts down and, we, and we, I would read what the scale is on here either in millimeters or inches and make a comparison to my closed height pressure. Then I would come down on this gauge, and this gauge is then telling me, uh, both in uh, uh, the pounds right here, the pounds is specifying the amount of force that the spring is applying. Okay, then I go to my open position, and that's going to be closed farther down here. So this is with the valve open. I'm applying the appropriate height, so at this height, this spring should have this amount of force. And we can read here that it's about 220 pounds of force is being applied against the um, valve in order to uh, keep it open. 